Hey everybody, welcome to Raising Vibrations. Um, you're with Simon today. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Mars and Venus. And in particular, the Mars and Venus conjunction that recently took place for us when we had a new moon in Libra. I find that um, the significance of the Mars and Venus new phase relationship that took place um, has is going to be impacting us for quite a while. Okay. And uh, so my contribution is to give you the definitions of what this new phase relationship between Mars and Venus is symbolizing. And of course, for everybody that's watching this video, you would have had this symbol or this symbolism or this event occur somewhere in your astrology chart. For me, it was in my eighth house. So before we jump into this video today, um, I do want to recommend that you watch the three-month forecast that I uh, have recently done, and that's for October, November, December. That three-month forecast shows you the chart analysis of the three months, and it also gives context as to what I mean when I'm talking about the Mars-Venus conjunction. Now, um, once you've watched that video, come over and watch this one or the other way around, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, um, they all go hand in hand. And finally, I will be doing a um, Jupiter through Jupiter and Scorpio through the houses series as well. So that's what I'm going to be doing um, regarding that. And all three of those are going to be all linked together. And it's really important to understand this because from the perspective of uh, the evolutionary dynamics, the Mars and Venus new phase relationship that took place um, in Virgo correlates to Jupiter's enter into Scorpio, okay, and what that symbolizes. Now, the whole of 2017, we've been experiencing Jupiter through Libra, and Venus has been a sign that has been co-ruling that Jupiter. In other words, Venus is the dynamic that's been that being evolved, and it's not a coincidence that the connection between Mars and Venus and their new phasal relationship has formed uh, just before uh, Jupiter goes into Scorpio and Pluto goes direct. So we're heading into a new evolutionary path here and the old no longer works for us and we're going to be letting that go. So that's what's in the three-month forecast. Today's video is about what this conjunction symbolizes for you in your house. So again, this new phase, this new relationship to yourself has formed somewhere in your chart. And the significance of this, of course, is that it's correlating to the um, evolutionary dynamics of your actual soul. It's not a coincidence that these symbols landed in the house placement relative to your own personal soul's journey. So by listening to this video and tuning into where Jupiter is currently transiting in your chart and where this new phase Mars-Venus occurred, you'll actually understand what are the core evolutionary dynamics that are busy and playing for you within the next three months and of course going forward as Jupiter moves through Scorpio, okay? So before we get into all of this fun stuff over here um, and through the houses, I need to give us a, a brief understanding of what all these symbols mean, okay? So let's start out. New phase conjunction, okay? You know how I'm talking about this um, Mars-Venus conjunction and the new phase? Well, the new phase conjunction took place at 20, uh, I think it was 19 degrees, pardon me, uh, Virgo. And um, as you can see here on this chart, this is where Venus is now 22 degrees Virgo and Mars is 21. Can you see that Venus is ahead of, Vir of Mars? This, this is what we mean about new phase, okay? Now, in evolutionary astrology, we understand that everything in is, is in relationship to everything else, meaning that all of the planets have relationships and they correlate to the cycles of growth, just as we have with the new moon and the full moon and the opposite and the first quarter moon, etc. Well, it's the same thing here. The only difference is instead of saying it's a new moon, we're saying it's a new phase conjunction with Mars and Venus. It's still the same energetic uh, energy. So the new phase then means that any two planets in a new phase are embarking upon a new cycle of evolutionary development. We're dealing with a new cycle of evolutionary developments with these two planets in relationship to each other. Okay. That which has not come before. This implies that prior to this life, a cycle has just ended. Now, when, it, when we're talking about um, 
cycle, like prior life cycles, this is for somebody that's individual. You know, if you've got a new phase conjunction in your astrology chart with Mars and Venus, then of course, you know, you would have ended a previous um, uh, evolutionary relationship to yourself and to how you related to other people in the past. And so for us, a whole of 2017 has been the culmination of these two symbols dancing back and forth. And so my question to you is, or your question to me is, okay, Simon, what is a, what is a, how do you establish these phases? Well, firstly, I do actually teach evolutionary astrology. So if you'd like to learn about this type of stuff in depth, um, you can come over to my website and learn about this and, and book, you know, the schools. In the context of answering this question, what we're dealing with here, and I hope everybody can see my um, little cursor. Let's get a nice green one out. I hope nobody's colorblind. So the new phase means that when you take a planet, okay, and or two planets, you look at the slowest moving planet in relationship to the fastest one, so around the sun. So Mars takes slower to go around the sun than Venus does. In other words, if the sun was over here, Mars, Venus goes around the sun, its orbit around the sun is, say, for instance, you know, just over a year, whereas Mars is two years. And so what we're doing here is we're taking Mars's orbit in relationship to Venus and saying, okay, Mars, you're slower, therefore you are static. In other words, you're staying in the same place and Venus will go around. And depending on where Venus is in relationship to Mars, it will dictate to us what evolutionary growth has occurred. So in the context here, yeah, Venus is just ahead of Mars, indicating new phase, okay? And because they're on top of each other, they're also part of the conjunction. So the new phase conjunction, thus it needs independence and freedom to simply initiate whatever experiences are deemed necessary in order to discover the ongoing process of becoming through the reactions to initiate experience, initiated experiences. In other words, every single person on this planet right now is currently experiencing a new phase Mars-Venus relationship and requires absolute freedom to figure out and explore what this new evolutionary impulse is like. In other words, we don't know what it's like. So we need the freedom to initiate whatever experiences we think are going to support this deeper desire for creative self-actualization. Why is this the case? Because the nodes are currently in Leo at the moment. The North Node's in Leo. So we're looking for creative self-actualization. And with this new phase conjunction here, we're dealing with how are we becoming incredibly self-actualized, finding destiny, understanding purpose, and this new phase relationship says, okay, well, let's try it out. Like, I don't know what it's about, but I've got to try new things out. And based on the environmental feedback, we'll be able to see if it works for us or not. And this is why it's really, really important, guys, right now, as you're listening to this video, to give yourself freedom to explore things that are unknown and allow yourself to go, oh, this, might, this feels a little bit insecure, or this feels a little bit weird, or this feels like I might not be doing the right thing. Trust that impulse, follow through with it, experience what you experience, there's messages there available for you, okay? So does everybody understand? New phase conjunction, we're dealing with the planets between these two, they are right on top of each other, implying a conjunction, and the new phase means that their relationship to each other has literally just begun. Okay, cool. So now that we have that out the way, let's go over to the Mars, uh, the Venus vibration. Okay, so what are we dealing with here when we're looking at Venus? The Venus vibration. Be mindful of your self-talk as it's a conversation with the universe. What we're dealing with here with the Venus vibration is your inner relationship to yourself and how you then relate to other people. So how do you meet your own needs as a human being, my needs, okay? And how do I interact with other people and their needs, okay? What are their needs? And how do I basically find commonality, balance, and so on and so forth? So Venus is the symbol that rules both Taurus and Libra. And it implies our inner, the inner side of Venus now directly correlates to the inner dialogue to ourselves. It's yin and reflective. Okay? What are my evolutionary needs? Okay? What do I need to attract in my life in order to survive? 
And this is important because what we do is we attract relationships and dynamics into our lives that then through the interaction reminds us of who we are and what we are, i.e. how are these needs being facilitated or not? How is this relationship helping me see myself or not? Yeah. And so each of us, the Venus symbol in the astrology chart reflects to us the inner and outer relationship to ourselves. So wherever you've got Venus in your chart, if you've got it in the eighth house in Gemini, you know that your evolutionary dynamics are to attract people into your life that are deeply psych psychologically confrontational and also on some degree enjoy communication, Gemini, that are diverse. And so through those attracting of people, you'll learn to understand the nature of what you're seeking within yourself. Okay. So the Venus archetype is the inner, the Venus archetype, okay? So the inner side of Venus now directly correlates to the inner dialogue to ourselves, yin reflective, okay? What are your needs? So now that we understand that Venus is about needs, what does Mars represent, okay? How we become self-aware, right? So Mars is the process here of the Fibonacci golden sequence in which there's a point, and from that point, we act and initiate, and it creates an evolutionary dynamic that leads to an experience. So Mars is the point of how we actually initiate a direction in life relative to an instinctual behavior. So Mars, now acting, now through acting instinctual, we learn about ourselves in the purest way. Through the process of acting instinctually, we learn from the response of our environment and more about uh, and more about our actions. Progressively, as we learn from our environment, we also gain more awareness of what it is desired through our actions. In other words, when Mars is situated in our astrology chart, it's telling us how we're acting instinctually and responding to life instinctually. And through environmental feedback, we get to be able to see what the nature of the desires are in a purest way. In other words, not influenced by the mind. So Mars dictates to us how we become self-aware relative to the actions. So now we have Mars and Venus in this new phase relationship, and what does it mean? It means instinctual actions that leads to an inner reflection of oneself and new evaluation of new needs and new sense of self-understanding. And so we're discovering this in a moment-to-moment -moment basis. So what is the universe showing us? What is life bringing to us right now? And how are we responding to it? And this is the key to the conversation today. Okay? The Mars and Venus new phase relationship, wherever it sits in your chart, is saying, hey, I'm here to show you that in each moment, something new is being developed for me, and I'm learning about it. I'm integrating it. I'm trying new things out. I'm exploring. I'm an explorer. Okay. So now that we've got that covered... Let's jump into this uh, beautiful little uh, diagram that I've created for everybody today. Okay. So if you have Mars and Venus new phase conjunction in the first house, you need to embrace uncertainty. Some of the most beautiful chapters in our lives won't have a title until much later. This is a new evolutionary direction that's occurring for you. So be spontaneous. Allow yourself to develop new relationships that come your way. And allow yourself to learn through environmental feedback by what is working and what is not. This is a double emphasis on a new phase conjunction. So if you have Mars and Venus in this first house and it's a new phase, the whole entire evolutionary cycle is just about to begin for you. And you're about to embrace in something that you've never experienced before. So allow the freedom to show you what's coming your way. Okay? So if you see this in your chart and you say, okay, Simon, I've got this Mars-Venus thing. What do you mean? Literally, allow yourself new direction. Allow yourself to be spontaneous. Allow yourself to challenge what you feel that you've always known, but now you want to try something new. Allow new types of relationships to occur for you. And listen to what's coming through your environment. Like you're acting a certain way and you're moving in a certain direction and somebody says, oh, that's, that sounds like a bit of, like it doesn't suit you or anything. You can ask yourself the question, yeah, that maybe that doesn't. Maybe I'm not really interested in that at all. How does the environmental feedback showing you whether or not this experience for you is good or not? Okay. Okay. So let's have a look. Mars and Venus new phase relationship in the second house of the astrology chart. Okay. So this is all about new values. Okay. Now this picture over here really does show it because in order for, you, for, in order for us to survive, 
in order for us to understand what requires nourishment, sustainability, we need to be able to understand what our needs are. So from the context of this picture, this leaf requires, needs sunlight, okay? It requires water and carbon dioxide. And the process of interacting with those three resources transforms the nature of the, the leaf's purpose. So what we're dealing with here with Mars, Venus and the second house new phase conjunction is asking yourself the question, I'm about to embark on establishing a new set of values. I'm going to learn about how to manage my resources and I'm going to understand what are my essential needs. Okay. What do I need in my life right now that is absolutely essential, that's bringing me the correct things for me to experience what I need to experience from an evolutionary point of view? Okay? And this is also an amazing time to understand how do you upgrade your sense of self-worth? Okay? All right. So let's move over to um, Mars and Venus, new phase conjunction in the third house of the astrology chart, right? So, new ideas. This is a time in which this, this, this is where you're going to be expanding your network, okay? This is a time for connectivity. This is a time for short-term activities, like, for instance, deciding to go um, and, uh, like, say, for instance, you enjoy poetry and you feel the desire to want to go to a poetry class as an example and you've been holding it off this is the time where you go and act upon that process you make new connections you stimulate your mind with new ideas you allow yourself to experience short-term activities you know whatever just just things that that you know don't need your attention for a long period of time but engage in them allow curiosity to be your primary motivation during this period of time Okay, and of course, allow yourself to recognize that this is a potential for a new language to be learned, literally where you could actually decide to learn a new language or that as you embark on opening yourself up to new ideas and new connections and new possibilities, that you come across a specific language that gets used in order to understand reality. So for instance, astrology is a language. Um, you might decide to learn numerology. You might decide to learn um, biochemistry. Each cosmology, each kind of new ex adventure has a language and you're embracing this new language. You're opening yourself up to the potential creative ideas of new directions, okay? Excellent. All right, so let's have a look. Mars and Venus in a new phase in the fourth house of the astrological chart, okay? So this is a time in which you're trying to understand who you are. What is your sense of identity, okay? Now, the nature of the fourth house itself is the archetype of how do we identify with ourselves from the perspective of consistent patterns of behavior that leads to a sense of self relative to the patterns of behavior. In other words, if I go to my work every single day, five days a week, and I um, clean chimneys, okay, as an example, the sense of identity that I hold relative to that pattern is I clean chimneys. This is what I do. All right, it's, it's linked with the 10th house, but in this context, yeah, it's how do you identify inwardly within yourself? So who am I? So naturally speaking with this new phase relationship between Mars and Venus, you're looking at establishing a new sense of identity. You will be reinventing your self-image. You will potentially want to move home or find a new way to develop how you feel comfortable in your home. This is a time in which healing of early life karmic dynamics is absolutely available. And the reason being is because the fourth house correlates to early life imprinting that has conditioned our sense of identity. So for instance, when you came out the womb, fourth house, your parents gave you a name. The nature of the name identifies you. And so therefore, through your upbringing, you've been conditioned by the environment that leads to a sense of who you are. So with this new phase relationship, there is a, an embracing of a new sense of self 
that's linked with new attachments. So you might go through cycles of safety and security being challenged for yourself right now and being very emotional with this new phase. Okay. Alrighty then, so let's have a look. Mars, Venus in the fifth house of the astrology chart, right? If you've got this new phase relationship over here, it's all about where are you heading? What's your destiny? What have you always imagined a desire to be in this life? What is your purpose? And so this is a wonderful opportunity in which you get to experience new creative expression. You get to find and understand the potential of fulfilling a sense of destiny. And this is a great time in which you're going to learn about how to learn to validate not only your own feelings and your own expression of self, but also how you're going to um, have other people validate that purpose for you, a lot of attention. And this is a wonderful time in which you're going to get the opportunity to heal the inner child. A sense of what is that, I mean, that picture just covers it completely. It's such a poetic way of seeing that this is what this new phase is about. Like, what is your creative pursuits? You know, it's potentially where a child comes into your life or you begin to experience things around you in which children are existing and you see the innocence within the process and it reminds you of your own inner sense of who you are. It might come across in the sense that you might feel the lack. You might feel uh, the woundedness within that inner child and this is a great time in which that healing will begin to take place. So this is about your creative self bringing your purpose and destiny to the world and saying, hey, this is me. Okay, so we've got to uh, the nature of Virgo. <laughs> nature, if you've got Mars and Venus forming in your sixth house of your astrology chart or, um, you know, dealing with the nature of Virgo here, it's time to detox. Okay, it's time to detox. Virgo is all about purification. It is all about cleaning out the gunk and the um, clogged emotional complexes and dynamics that are linked with the past that no longer serve you anymore. So this is a time in which you're going to get your health in check. This is a time when you're going to get yourself active, moving, clearing stuff out, becoming more fresh within yourself. So adjustments in personal growth, becoming aligned with reality. These are key factors here. Becoming aligned with reality and crisis and sacred space are, uh, you know, together within the context of the Virgo energy here. And for all of us, we're kind of going through this anyway because the nature of Mars-Venus new phase conjunction is actually taking place in, um, in Virgo, you know. So if you've got the symbolism, it's a double whammy. So becoming aligned with reality is becoming, having a reality check, okay, this is what I want to do with my time. This is how I'm going to get it done. This is where my sense of lack is. This is where I need to improve. This is where I want to grow. And this is a great time for you to explore how to get your dreams self-actualized, how to actually bring them into the world, right? What is the practical application that's required in order to get yourself um, the sense of inspiration that you want in your dreams? So time to detox, great time to clear out everything that's not working for you anymore. Okay, so let's have a look. Mars and Venus in the seventh house of the astrology chart, right? And so um, this is where you're going to be learning through others, okay? How, does it, how do we interact with other people? How do you find balance and fairness and equality? You might be hypersensitive to this process right now, and so therefore there is a need to find balance through extremes. And you might be dealing with that on some level, right? Inclusion developing new social contracts, being very social itself, and reevaluating your bargain. You know, how have you established certain expectations and customs and norms um, prior to this new phase conjunction? And how is this Mars Venus saying to you, okay, mm, what I thought was fair once is not fair anymore. And what I felt I was willing to accept is no longer being willing to accept. So what am I going to change? So this is the time in which you're going to re-establish your bargain. You're going to redefine new social contracts. Be out there. Be free. And finding balance and fairness is going to be a big piece for you and learning about yourself through others. So people will show up with maybe some information to give you. And so it's about inclusion. It's about sharing. It's about integration. Okay. 
All right. So Mars and Venus in the eighth house of the astrology chart, right? The picture says it all for itself. Learning empowerment through shared resources. This is the time in which you're going to break out from the psychological and emotional complexes that have kept you disempowered. So unfortunately, part of the cycle is having to let go of some dynamics of, of um, attachments that no longer support you. So you will be experiencing uh, healing, needing to heal through cycles of betrayal, trust, and a loss, okay? Letting go, breaking free from the attachment. So this is a time in which a relationship dynamics where you could possibly get married. This is a time in which you could find yourself um, becoming, uh, you know, committed to a relationship or uh, a time in which a relationship ends or this time when which you decide to follow your destiny and commit to the nature of what it is that you need to do and you've been kind of procrastinating for a certain while. So this Mars Venus through the eighth house is a new evolutionary direction regarding what symbolizes empowerment to you, how you can merge with what symbolizes empowerment, how you're going to osmose with it, and how you're going to experience personal empowerment. And of course, healing the subconscious emotional dynamics regarding lifetimes of betrayal, trust, and abuse. Okay. All right. So now we come to um, Mars and Venus through the ninth house of the astrological chart. All right. This is a, a new cosmology. Okay. This is an amazing time for you to begin to explore a pursuit for truth. Right? Open your mind to the new creative potential out there of what is possible. This is a time in which you feel this desire to want to begin communicating the nature of life in a very intuitive and very profound and deep way. Learning about new things. So cycles of exploration. And it's really interesting because this is a time in which travel and expansion and new personal truth is going to be developed for you but it could come with the fact that this new cosmology that gets developed for you through this transit will, will bring you cycles of, oh, I didn't actually know as much as I thought I did. And there's so much more to learn. So this is a time in which a new relationship to personal truth is going to become um, amplified for you. And it's going to be in alignment with uh, a new cosmology, a new way of validating what you, the phenomena of reality. You might take up a course, you might learn astrology, you might um, go to university and decide that this is now the time to do that. This is the, the potential for you to begin a new evolutionary cycle regarding a new sense of, ah, this is, this is what I'm learning and this is how I'm going to understand myself. But again, it can come through these cycles of, oh, I thought I knew a lot, but now there's still more to learn. Okay. All right. So Mars and Venus through the 10th house of the astrological uh, chart. And of course, this is the profession. <laughs> now, I want to be very clear about this. From my point of view, I don't like Capricorn, the 10th house, and Saturn correlating to the career. As much as it is in that sense, I feel that it's missing a core element of what the Capricorn actually symbolizes, which is what are my life goals? What new sense of direction do I want to pursue? What determines um, growth for me? And when we link our inner relationship, our sense of who we are to this Capricorn energy, this 10th house energy, we begin to see that it's more about what purpose life is about. You know, So within the fifth house, it's all about destiny, but in the tenth house, it's like, how do I commit to a cycle, to a path that matures me, that gives me authority within the context of consistently investing time in this process? And so, therefore, within the context of human behavior, we call it a profession. So, this is a time in which redefining your life goals looking at the inner reflections within yourself that's going to lead to new outer structures. So deep internal reflection is going to be uh, 
partake, you know, happening for you. And this is going to be a new sense of, ah, maybe I've always wanted to do that. Now this is the time I'm going to do that. I'm going to follow that. I'm going to pursue that. And so this is also a time in which you, depending on where you are within your own life, social obligations and new responsibilities, right? It's all about maturation and growth. So what, how do I commit to something and follow that road that then eventually over a long period of time, I've become an authority of it. So what are my obligations? How are my new responsibilities being played out? How can I interact with them? Okay, so new, new phase Mars and Venus. I once was a, a doctor and now I've decided to become a teacher, right? Because I want to learn about knowledge. Whereas doctor is about all about medicine and helping and healing. Whereas now my inner sense of self is about expanding knowledge and teaching and interacting with children as an example. Okay. All right. So now we come over to Mars and Venus new phase relationship in the 11th house of the astrology chart. And for you that's having this over here, we're aligning ourselves with groups of people, right? Alignment with new groups. This is a time in which there's a new cycle of liberation and the potential to be very innovative and lead us into new directions and actually have your visions of what you perceive to be um, ex that, that could accelerate people's uh, ideas about certain something so if you're working in a, in a company as an example and you've got this new phase relationship here you might feel this strong desire to want to say hey i have this innovative thought and idea and i want to share it with you because i feel like it could steer the nature of this this group setting this might be a time in which you feel like you're existing within a group and within the context of that group you've outgrown its values and feel the need to break free from those values and those needs of the group and what they symbolized once and strike on your own and find new people, new experiences, new insights around new things. So this is forming an alignment with new groups, you know, like-mindedness. So I encourage you to feel that during this period of time, if you do decide to, you know, not feel like friends are, are, kind of um you know giving you the vibe that 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 allows you to be creative enough with yourself then this is a time where you maybe should examine the underlying reasons and values as to what that group represents relative to yourself okay so new groups new associations new clubs new sense of who am i <laughs> okay and finally we have the new phase mars venus relationship occurring in the 12th house of the astrology chart now, this can be a really, really interesting one because what we're dealing with here is a spiritual crisis. And the reason why I say it's a spiritual crisis is because, unfortunately, this is a time in which the nature of Pisces itself can bring us intense amounts of dreams and the ability to experience um, our reality through illusions and through um, you know, symbols and dreams and stuff. And we get to actualize them. We get to culminate these dreams. This is the potential for really aligning ourselves with a deeper meaning of our lives. Like what is the ultimate meaning of our life and how can I find meaning in that? And so the spiritual crisis comes along in which there's a process and looking at your reality and saying, why do I do this? What's the meaning in this process? So this is a time in which the dissolving of old ideas and activating deep spiritual awakening will occur as a way to understand the inner relationship to what is actually the driving force behind your reality? And that's why I show this picture over here because you can see this kid's like looking. It's like there's the, the physical form, Saturn, and there's the Neptunian form in the space. And it's this interdimensional interaction between the two and you're becoming sensitive to that in a way in which you're wanting to become aligned with what is purpose and meaning. So it's a very profound opportunity to follow your dreams and listen to your dreams and pay attention to signals that are coming from different places that are giving you a sense of inspiration. Okay. All right, everybody. Um, I'd like to say thank you very much. I really hope that you enjoyed the content. You can support this work um, by getting a reading for myself, joining one of our astrology classes, um, you know, writing in the comments below your experience i'd love to hear your experience of your new phase mars venus um, and what house it's in i use the house system porphyry um, 
then that's a, a pretty decent um, house system that helps. This could change for you a little bit. But either way, um, write in the comments below. I'd love to hear your, your sharings on how your new phase is working and other people would probably want to hear it as well. And uh, if you want to get in touch with me by, you know, sharing with me some of love, etc., you can always contact me at raisingvibrations.sv at gmail.com or check out my website at simonforster.com. All right. Okay, guys, have a fantastic uh, day slash evening wherever you are listening to this. Thanks very much for your attention. Don't forget to watch the forecast video and also the Jupiter through the houses is coming really, really soon. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.